guys. So something that has really been like nails on a chalkboard for me over the past year is the clean beauty movement. And I'm gonna tell you why in today's video. Clean beauty has been having a moment for the past few years. It's grown exponentially. I think in 2018, it accounted for about 25% of total skincare product spending dollars, which by the way, amount to 5.6 billion alone in 2018. So, you know, a pretty large chunk of change. Clean beauty is somewhat synonymous with natural skincare or natural. And it's this incredibly vague concept that as a dermatologist, I'm always puzzled by what patients or viewers, consumers are talking about when they come asking for clean products and recommendations for clean, uh, non-toxic skincare. I'm going, okay, what? Let's take a step back. So, I don't know. Gwyneth Paltrow, I think, was one of the first people who kicked off this love affair with demonizing random ingredients alongside the Environmental Working Group, which, by the way, is a group of individuals who are not scientists, who are not physicians, who take studies from the medical literature and misrepresent them to promote products for which they have financial interest in. So, you know, then between them and Gwyneth, we have this whole clean beauty phenomenon. There's literally, literally billions of dollars that we're spending a year on something we don't even have any definition as to what exactly clean beauty is. The FDA has no definition for clean or non-toxic, so what, what exactly are they even talking about? Nothing! <laughs> clean beauty is merely a marketing tactic to sell you products a particular angle and the the underpinnings behind it are not rooted in science or anything of true value or merit to your skin so if I could ask for anything in 2020 from you guys it's to I won't say abandon products that claim to be, be clean or, or you know clean beauty approved it's not to say that those are necessarily bad products but do not attach any form of sentiment to the terms clean beauty or non-toxic because it means nothing. I mean, it's like if I wanted to start a marketing campaign for skincare products that were Thai B approved, Thai B is my mom's multi-poo, by the way, if you're not familiar, that were Thai B approved and I got enough, I got enough people with enough money to promote this and back it up and make it a thing, before you know it, people would be coming into their dermatologist asking for Tybee approved skincare products. The clean beauty movement is the same principle. Um, but this, there's, there's really vague and these kind of arbitrary designations of random ingredients. And the ingredients that they choose to demonize and remove from the products that are labeled clean are things that we've been using for eons as dermatologists and we love and we know work really well. I think Gwyneth Paltrow first demonized propylene glycol in skincare products, claiming that it was akin to putting antifreeze on your skin or something bogus like that. Propylene glycol is an ingredient that you will find in numerous prescription and over-the-counter topical medications. It's a penetration enhancer, so it allows the active medication ingredient to get into your skin and be effective. And it's also a humectant. It's not like putting antifreeze on your skin whatsoever and to to say that is is just incredibly misleading to, to start off furthermore the clean beauty movement seems to have a obsession with demonizing something as benign as petrolatum they, they claim that it's toxic and carcinogenic and again this is absolutely not true this is for a dermatologist this is one of our favorite you know it's one of the best ingredients for in terms of it's a superior uh, humectant and it works very well uh, in terms of addressing problems with the skin barrier, dry skin conditions, and also it's non-allergenic, meaning of all the stuff you could be putting on your skin, petrolatum is probably one of the safest things that you could put on your skin. It doesn't absorb into the skin or penetrate. It is so safe that, you know, we even have people put it onto a braided, wounded skin and, and it makes a nice barrier and protects it from infection. So the demonizing of, of mineral oil and petrolatum are, you know, completely bogus and not rooted in any true clinical outcomes or clinical data or scientific studies whatsoever. It's just something that they've made up to sell you a product in such a way that you know, you'll think it's unique and worth paying more money for, when in fact it's not. 
Then there's another similar kind of agency, the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics. I mean, it's not as though our, you know, moisturizers are out there with AK-47 assault rifles waiting to take us out if we make the wrong move. Um, so, you know, safe cosmetics, cosmetics over the counter, yeah, I mean, you can become irritated, something can irritate your skin, there's no guarantee that that won't happen, but they're safe. I mean, it's not as though these things are toxic or carcinogenic. But anyways, the campaign for safe cosmetics, whatever the heck that is, has decided that all preservatives are something that we should fear, that are you know, endocrine disrupting. And again, no, no science rooted in that statement whatsoever. This is based on looking at some studies where, you know, maybe they injected a rat with pounds and pounds of a paraben and it, it got a cancer or a tumor, but that is not what bears out to be true in actual human use. And we've been using these ingredients for a very, very long time with no correlation between any human disease state and use of of preservatives. So they demonize parabens while parabens happen to actually be one of the safest preservatives in skincare products. In fact, in 2019, the American Contact Dermatitis Association got together and deemed parabens one of the safest preservatives uh, out there, the, the least likely to cause problems for people as far as irritation and sensitivity. So, you know, they have gotten this weird bad rap for no reason. I mean, it's like, you know, they're being bullied in a sense by Gwyneth Paltrow. They also demonized formaldehyde releasers. Again, these uh, preservatives in large uh, studies, both in Europe and the US, have proven to be low risk preservatives and very safe. Unfortunately, with all of this mania around getting rid of preservatives, which by the way, are really important in your skincare products. When products don't have preservatives, they can harbor bacteria and fungi. There have been cases of an ulcerative corneal infection due to pseudomonas from mascara that uh, wasn't properly preserved. So this is nothing to take lightly. We need preservatives in our skincare products to keep to truly keep us safe from, from getting bacterial contamination. But for whatever reason, they've decided that preservatives are not safe. We should be putting ourselves at risk for a pseudomonal skin infection or eye infection, my God. Um, and they've demonized all of these preservatives, which in, in fact, which in fact are quite safe and necessary and important ingredients. And an unfortunate consequence of all of this, you know, unnecessary phobia around parabens is that now cosmetic manufacturers have replaced parabens and other safer, better preservatives with a preservative called methyl isothiazinolone or methyl chloroisothiazinolone, which is incredibly sensitizing and more likely to cause allergic contact dermatitis for people. And as a result, we have an increased incidence now of people developing allergies to methyl chloroisothiazinolone because it really shouldn't be left on the skin as a preservative. So I mentioned Gwyneth, of course, and I mentioned the say, this campaign for safe cosmetics. The other one, though, you guys, that is, is rooted in fear mongering and no scientific merit whatsoever, is the Environmental Working Group. And for whatever reason, they've decided that various and sundry sunscreen ingredients are going to kill you, you know? And there's no truth to this. Yes, we have recent studies showing that some chemical sunscreen ingredients are absorbed into the bloodstream. I have a video talking about this at length, but that doesn't mean that they're toxic, you know? I just had a cup of coffee and I've got caffeine that I absorbed from the coffee circulating my body, that's why I have all this energy, um, but I'm not gonna drop dead because of it. And likewise, you know, just because something can be detected in your blood does not mean that it is harmful. We have a kidney and liver and, and whatnot for processing things and getting rid of them. And so to just flat out, you know, say something is bad because it has been shown to be absorbed at low levels, you know, is fear mongering. So they, they put all these weird uh, rankings on things, which are not, you know, they're not rooted in any science. They rate ingredients on this arbitrary scale of, of risk, of hazard risk. And on their website, they'll list scientific studies. But if you actually read the science there and, you know, have the background to understand it, you realize that, like, this is, this is nothing. Like, they're, they're basing these claims on nothing factual, really. Yeah, so then they end up listing a variety of studies, but honestly, they're not qualified to interpret any of these studies. They're just, you know, uh, 
lobbyists, a group of lobbyists who have an interest in promoting certain products and, you know, making up this arbitrary ranking system that is not agreed upon by physicians or scientists. Uh, this is not something that, you know, if you go to your doctor, they're not going to be like, oh, this, this particular product has a hazard, hazard risk of five. Like that's not something that physicians or scientists do you know that that's not our language and there that's not rooted in any truth so what i'm trying to tell you is that the environmental working group rating system of cosmetics and consumer products is bogus and you need to stop you need to stop uh putting putting stock in it because it's not rooted in anything of true scientific value or, or actual actual merit to you and it's actually harmful i mean demonizing sunscreen ingredients these are ingredients that are intended to protect against a sunburn sunburns can be incredible are incredibly damaging to the skin and predispose you for skin cancers photo aging and so to just demonize these ingredients and put fear into consumers uh, about sunscreen ingredients it affects sunscreen compliance, meaning how people will be willing to use and continue to use sunscreens. And that is bad, uh, you know, that is a bad outcome. So I don't, I don't recommend using the environmental working group for anything. Uh, you know, they're not working. They're not working for you, they're working for themselves, and it's corrupt. To illustrate this, they have one ingredient on there, polyethylene glycol 2 soyamine which, you know, polyethylene glycols are fine. They're, they're products uh, and they help to allow things to be rinsed off. And they've given this a five, which is moderate risk, but then they acknowledge that there's no, there's nothing, uh, you know, the, the data is limited. So why does it get a five then? How is it moderate risk? Uh, you know, it's bogus. It's completely bogus. There are certain stores that, you know, only sell clean beauty. Now you can go into Sephora and they have that clean beauty label on things, which means nothing. I mean, it's completely bogus. And you may say, well, you've got several products that I, we've seen you use this past year that have the clean at, at Sephora seal of approval. Uh, you know, you didn't seem to have a problem using those. It's not that I have a problem with the products. Some of the products are actually good. For example, the Super Goop zinc screen that I used and loved, that gets the clean at Sephora seal of approval. So it's not the products per se, it's the marketing. The marketing is stupid and misleading and I don't want you to fall for it uh, moving forward. Uh, you know, I don't want, I, I see this trend of like getting rid of everything that you have and replacing it with clean beauty. I mean, you're replacing it with bogus marketing and you know, what you had probably was fine. There's really no consistency either in terms of what it is that their definition is. I mean, yeah, Sephora will list what their definition is. Whole food has a clean seal of approval too. I mean, they're not consistent from marketer to marketer, but the consumer is left believing that this is some, something that the, the seller has done on their behalf to ensure that their product is not gonna be harmful to them or to the environment. But I've gotta tell you guys, this marketing is really misleading and dangerous because it causes people to fear things that are useful and helpful for not only their day-to-day -day skincare and lifestyle needs, but also for potentially preventing diseases like skin cancer. You know, the fear mongering around sunscreen ingredients is not justified or warranted. So yeah, in general, clean beauty demonizes sulfates, parabens, as I mentioned, formaldehyde releasers, another preservative that guys is fine. I mean, honestly, uh, you know, yeah, you can develop an allergy to anything, anything. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you won't develop an allergy to the stuff that they've, they've deemed clean. In fact, you're probably more likely to develop an allergy to those things because a lot of times the clean and natural skincare is laden with essential oils and botanic extracts that actually can be a source of allergic and irritant contact dermatitis as well as photodermatitis, meaning rashes that you develop uh, when the product is on your skin and you go out in the sun, it makes a horrible rash. That has been reported. Uh, by the way, check the description box because I've got references to support everything I'm saying here so that you don't just think I'm talking out of my butt. But yeah, uh, there's a study that showed that of people using natural skincare products, 6.22% of them reported at least one or if not more adverse skin reactions. Um, and women in the, were much more common in that category. And, and that's not surprising. Women tend to use a lot more stuff than men, but men are catching up in that category. Men, we're starting to see more cases of facial contact dermatitis in men from using too many skincare products. 
The other ingredients I see demonized a lot are, um, I mentioned formaldehyde releasers, chemical sunscreens, butylated hydroxytoluene, and phthalates, as well as propylene glycol. And I'm like, okay, I mean, wh wh on what grounds, on what grounds are they, are they demonizing these ingredients? Yes, you can become allergic to these, absolutely. You can become allergic to anything though. And you're more likely to become allergic to one of the natural fragrances, botanics, whether you want to believe it or not. The allergy to those th allergies to those things and sensitivity and irritation to those things are far more common than allergy to, to parabens. Allergen to parabens is very, very low. Uh, so, you know, choosing a handful of ingredients to demonize it doesn't make any sense. What's a better message to send to consumers is that using too many products, putting too much stuff on your face, leaving too much stuff on your skin, just increases the chances that eventually you might develop an allergy to any one thing. Uh, but that's not a great line, that's not a great tagline for selling for, for a billion, you know, $6 billion industry. They didn't get, they didn't get to make that much money by telling people the truth. They got to that much money by telling people that, you know, they should buy expensive products over inexpensive stuff with a false claim that the inexpensive stuff is somehow toxic or deadly or going to put you, you know, into an early grave. Not true whatsoever. Yeah, I, I just wanted to come on here, you guys, you know, cause this past year, those commercials, they've just really been getting on my nerves. And I get a lot of questions from you guys, well-meaning, well-intentioned saying, hey, have you seen this new brand? They claim to be clean and non-toxic. And I just wanna stop you right there when you comment that, like, just stop saying that, just stop. Let's just not, let's just stop saying the words clean and non-toxic, and then maybe it'll just go away and they'll stop using that marketing. Like, we have to stop, as consumers, we have to stop placing value on that because they're gonna to continue to use that in order to sell us stuff and it doesn't help us. And you know, honestly, if you interviewed the um, CEOs of these skincare companies about these ingredients that they have kicked off of their off of their ingredient list, I guarantee they can't tell you much about them or, or if anything. So it's like, you know, what are you basing this off of? I know what they're basing it off of, a marketing campaign to sell you crap. Um, you know, so my, what I would hope for you guys is that moving forward, we just stop saying the words clean and non-toxic and hopefully the marketing will go away. In other words, stop asking for clean beauty products because it's a vague, it's a vague question and it, it's one that sells a lot, sells a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, if you're one of these people that fills out consumer surveys, consumer satisfaction surveys, uh, a lot of times they'll ask you, uh, on a scale of zero to 10 or whatever, how important is it that your products be clean and non-toxic? Just, just say zero. Like it's important that they don't say that because it's stupid. <laughs> it's just stupid marketing. Uh, so that's all, honestly, you know, I, I, I complain a lot about skincare marketing, but some of it, I mean, that's their goal is to sell products and they look at what does the consumer want? So we have to stop wanting this vague concept of clean and non-toxic. Uh, you know, and, and, and hopefully it'll go away. <laughs> Again, check the description box. I will put all of my references. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.